Hello, hello. Welcome back to our Tuesday Talk series. I'm Hannah Levin with Heartfelt Wellbeing. And today we're going to explore the shift from kapha season, spring, into pitta season, summer. So I'm filming this in mid-May and we're experiencing depending on where you are. Maybe it already is feeling really summery where you are. Maybe it's still feeling springy. Maybe it's kind of weaving back and forth. So in the springtime, we have the dominance of kapha dosha, and kapha is made up of earth and water. And so in the springtime, as you may have known if you've been hanging out with me here for a while, the spring is really a time when we're looking at energizing and elevating our energy because we come out of the winter feeling lethargic and dull and heavy. And so we're eating lighter, we're moving our bodies more, we're clearing out our space, <laughs> spring cleaning. And so the spring energy is really like we're focusing on the natural energy is downward moving energy that kapha energy and so we're balancing that with cultivating upward moving energy however when we get to the transition into pitta season or summer that no longer serves us so well because we're shifting into the season dominated by fire and so if we're cultivating lots of upward moving energy that's gonna really make the fire rage and so we need to have this shift to a little more balancing perhaps some cooling that happens through the summertime so i'm gonna go through some various aspects of this time of shifting from kapha season into pitta season those of you that are here live feel free to ask questions in the chat i'm happy to answer them as we go so i just explained the general overview of the doshas what's really interesting too is that every dosha in connection with another dosha has one common guna or quality and so while kapha and pitta may seem like they're extremely different, they both have the element of water in the dosha. So kapha is water and earth, and pitta is fire and water. Yeah, so water or wetness is the common quality between pitta and kapha. And this is really interesting when we look at like um in countries where they're like closer to the equator where there's not so much like differentiation between the hot and the cold of the summer and the winter but there's a rainy season and a dry season right the rainy season is the summertime that's the wet time and the dry season is is the winter and so when we look at there are places where summer is very dry. In general, there's a wetness though. There's a lot of um, growth that's happening if you're in kind of a temperate climate. So of course there's gonna be differences between locations. And in general, there's some wetness in the spring as the snow melts or as we're um, getting spring rains. And then there's also wetness in the summer as we're growing crops and we're, you know, in these lush surroundings, perhaps. <laughs> and so the wet quality is something we want to be aware of during the summertime. And, um, and navigating that with, with support or with drying, depending on, depending on what you need. The other thing is that when we're shifting from the coolness of kapha to the warmth of pitta, if we haven't cleared out like the excess insulation that we've built up over the winter during kapha season, then that creates problems during pitta season because we're carrying that excess with us. So, you know, doing something like a spring cleanse, a spring detox is really, really great. And some of you 
may have done the one that we just did in April in my community. Um, and so I lead detoxes every spring and every autumn to support these shifts in the seasons. So if you're aware of that, what that is cultivating is clearing out the liver. So heat that has been building up in the liver over the winter and maybe even shedding some extra pounds. It is natural for us to gain a little weight in the winter and lose it in the summer. And when we're flowing in between, we're, you know, from moving from winter to summer, like we are right now, we're maybe shedding a little bit of weight. And so that awareness of detoxing or cleaning, right? cleaning out, spring cleaning, both inside the body and in our external space is really, really helpful. So um, the, the energy of the springtime I mentioned is more like we're energizing and elevating our, our energy from more of the stagnation and lethargy of the winter and then when we get to the summer, we really want to focus on relaxing. So we're doing the opposite of what the elements encourage us to do, right? So just to review again, the kapha energy is very heavy and grounding water and earth. And it's like we're moving down, we're grounded, we're um, feeling very stagnant, so lethargic, maybe more tired. And so we need to be like, haha, I see this. Ayurvedic wisdom, right? That kapha is heavy and it's kind of seducing me into lethargy and things like sleeping in or overeating or, um, you know, not moving my body very much. And I'm going to counteract that. So I'm going to cultivate more movement, more uh, lighter, spicy foods, more warmth. Yeah. And then when we get to the summer, the pitta elements of fire and water are very focused, right? So Pitta is like very driven and organized and, you know, check the boxes and establish the outcomes. And so what do we do to balance that? We focus on cooling off and relaxing. So summer is a great time to relax, go swimming at the lake or the river or the ocean, you know, like connect, connecting with, with some of this like more lighthearted energy because Pitta can get really, really intense. To the degree that you have these doshas in your constitution or as imbalances, you will be affected by them. Okay, so I've been talking just about kapha and pitta, but vata dosha is also in there. And vata dosha is not going to be as aggravated during kapha season or pitta season. But we need to keep in mind that vata dosha can go out of balance. Like in, in kapha season, it can go out of balance with too much drying because kapha is naturally wet. If we do too many drying foods or um, not enough like oiling the body, if you ha are naturally dry, then you're going to end up with more imbalance if you're vata predominant. And same with in pitta season, if you're vata predominant, the warmth will feel really good, but it can be too drying again. And so we want to really keep in mind that, you know, there's general guidelines for the seasons and we want to also have this layer of awareness of what our personal constitutions are so that we're not just totally like, you know, blowing, <laughs> blowing them up in aggravation. Um, and I'm happy to answer other questions about that if that's, if that's not clear. So I'm going to go through some lifestyle and food recommendations for this time of year. And before I do that, I just want to give this caveat that for everybody, there'll be kind of this weaving back and forth, even during a day, you know, part of the day might feel very kapha and part of the day might feel very pitta. Um, you know, where we are in Virginia right now, it's um, in the mornings and the evenings lately, it's been kind of misty and foggy and, um, and cool. That's more kapha. 
And then during the afternoons, it's getting up into the mid 70s and it's warm and sunny and clear and that's more Pitta, right? So even during the days, we're navigating this, this back and forth. So when we're living this Ayurvedic lifestyle, we're really in constant conversation with nature, like what's happening? And it might just mean, you know, adding a little more um, spice to your food or exercising. Uh, like this morning, the yoga practice that I taught, we used weights during the kapha morning, right? So we were building more strength. There was a little more challenge. We got some heat built in the body. That's not a practice that I would do in the afternoon when it's hot outside, right? So, um, so being aware that, you know, it's not just food that balances us, but our lifestyle as well, and that we're in constant conversation. There's never a like hit autopilot with Ayurveda, okay? <laughs> There's no cruise control that you can just be like, okay, now it's smooth sailing. All I have to do is eat this way. And, you know, um, there are some some pieces like that with the seasons that we we are aware of, but like right now, daylight's increasing every day till we get to the summer solstice, right? And the warmth is going to be building in our environment. So we need to constantly be in, in conversation with what's happening with the doshas and run experiments. You know, you can see if you do this, how do you feel? If you do this, how do you feel? Okay, so for lifestyle, um, the, the first awareness is with with kapha season, there's a coolness, right? So um, we're working on building warmth and especially warmth from within the body to help melt away stagnation, whether that's just lethargy or brain fog or actual weight gain. That also benefits vata because vata is naturally cold. And so um, vata and pitta, or sorry, vata and kapha are both benefited by building warmth and Vata also does well to receive warmth from the outside <laughs> of their bodies because naturally energy is constantly moving out of a Vata body and Kapha bodies are um, reserving energy constantly. So they need more energy from the inside moving out and Vata needs more energy from the outside moving into them. And during kapha season, pitta can actually feel pretty good as long as they're not being overly saturated. Um, and we'll talk about oiling in just a little bit. So warmth is welcome during kapha season and then we move into the warm time of the year and pitta season can find um, a lot of us, even vata and kapha individuals, feeling uncomfortable in the heat. So depending on how hot it gets, there's kind of like a nice median temperature, right? That's like, oh, the warmth feels good. It feels relaxing. It's nice not to wear so many layers of clothes. And then there's like, it keeps going up. The temperature goes up and we are like, this is uncomfortable, right? And it also depends on if the heat is, um, is dry heat or moist heat, right? If it's humid out, um, that's going to feel particularly uncomfortable to Pitta and Kapha who already have this moisture in their in their bodies. Vada can tolerate that a little bit more because they tend towards dryness. So the temperatures also affect the mind. And so um, we were talking about like being cool in the springtime can make us a little lethargic or foggy mind. And then in the the summertime, the the heat can really make us a little more feisty, <laughs> yeah. And um, so that that can be like focus. It could be playful. It could be ambition. But it can also be um, like more irritability. And so it's good to keep in mind. You know, heat can make us irritable, especially if you're pitta predominant. And I always like to remind us that understanding Ayurveda and dosha really leads us to live a more compassionate life in relationship with other people because we understand like, oh, that person's getting so irritable in the heat because they have so much pitta or pitta imbalance in them right now. And, you know, it's kind of like, we can we can just say 
that's, that's how they are right now. You know, it's not like some big flaw. It's just understanding, like they're going to be a little more irritated and sensitive to this, right? So exercise is something that builds heat. And so in the springtime, um, like late winter through spring, we're really focused on building more heat with our breath body practices and, um, and doing more like strengthening and challenging ourselves. Again, we're letting go of stagnation in the body. And then when there's more heat in the environment, that's not going to feel so good. So once there's more pitta in action in our environment, we really want to focus on still exercising every day, but doing it definitely during the cool times in the early morning or in the evenings and really allowing that to support us so we're not building heat in an already hot time of the day. Um, and I would say this is true even if you're going into air conditioning. Like say you're going into a gym, you know, at two o'clock in the afternoon, but it's like 90 degrees outside eventually in the summer. Like that's still affecting you even if you're in an air conditioned environment. So it's gonna it's gonna aggravate you more, especially if you're pitta predominant or pitta imbalanced. So we really want to focus in on exercising in ways that might also be cooling for us. Things like swimming is a great thing to focus on in the summertime so that you're in water, you're cooling off, especially if you're pitta predominant or imbalanced. Um, as the days grow longer, we want to focus on how are we aligning with going to sleep and waking up. Now, depending on where you are, you might just tune into the dosha clock and just commit to going to bed by 10 p.m. and waking up before 6 a.m. if you're in a more extreme climate. So the further you are away from the equator, the more challenging it gets to really align with the rhythms of nature because it's like light all the time really far away from the equator if you're in a more temperate place um like we are in in virginia flowing with the guideline of going to bed by 10 p.m is still helpful and then waking up before the sunrise so that's going to be a little earlier, a little earlier, a little earlier until we get to the summer solstice. And so, you know, around the summer solstice, probably getting up around 5 a.m. and then going to bed by, by 10 p.m., even though it might be light until 9 or so. So there's not a whole lot of darkness before you go to bed. And don't let this throw your meal times off because we don't want to be eating really late. So still we want to try to eat earlier, later dinner so that our body has three to four hours before we go to sleep. So definitely eating, you know, by 6 p.m. if possible, definitely by 7 p.m. So that digestion is complete before you go to sleep. A lot of people will get burnt out in the summer because they're staying up really late and then the sun gets up really early. There can be that kapha imbalance if you're sleeping in in the morning and feeling groggy and then there's kind of a wet blanket on your day. So seeing if you can wake up prior to the sunrise is really, really helpful um, on the days that you are um, able to do that. So do, do what you can. Okay. And then sleeping, you know, taking a little siesta in the summertime in the afternoon can be a really nourishing thing too. So, uh, you know, little nap in the mid middle of the afternoon, um, can be really, um, really supportive. Whereas we're not napping during kapha season, like excess sleep is not recommended when it's really hot out in the middle of the afternoon, you might, you know, lay in the hammock for a little bit. Again, we don't want to sleep for a long time, maybe 15 minutes, and then get back and get to our day. But having this cooling in the, in the um, afternoon can be really, really helpful. Um, meditation is also really, well, it's helpful all the time. 
Um, and especially for balancing pitta and moving from kapha time into pitta season, kapha season into pitta season, your meditation may shift a bit. It might feel less like you're falling asleep during it. You might find that you're getting more ideas or less foggy during it. So that's something just to pay attention to. Ideally, you're doing this early in the morning. Um, and meal spacing. So another thing, we'll talk about food in a moment, but during the summer, it's it can feel like there's just food everywhere. Um, there's, you know, fresh fruit and vegetables coming out of the garden, and hopefully you're eating lots and lots of those. Um, and it can be really tempting to snack, and we still want to honor the digestive fire. So the digestive fire, generally, if you've cultivated some support for it through doing a detox in the spring, you come into the summer with pretty strong digestive fire. We still want to give full time for that, um, the meals to be digested three to four hours at least in between food intake. So we're not snacking and we're not wearing down that digestive fire. Usually by the end of the summer, by the end of pitta season, our digestion is feeling kind of uh, exhausted. <laughs> yeah. So we want to keep it supported. So one thing if you're living especially in a really hot environment is you might notice that you're not hungry in the middle of the day when it's recommended that we eat our largest meal during pitta time between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So you might go to two meals a day and eat your largest meal around 10 a.m. and then have a second meal that's a little lighter around 4 p.m. and then just let that be your your food intake. If you're tuned in with the solar energy and able to get outside enough, you'll notice that you are supported by the solar energy, that you feel energized by it. And that is really nice to recognize like we are diurnal creatures <laughs> and the more sunlight that we have in our environment, we have more energy and more positive outlook. And, you know, we know from winter time, we'll be hungrier and maybe a little more withdrawn or even depressed. And so honoring that the solar energy feeds us is really, really powerful. So um, you might not need to eat as much, even if there's like lots and lots of food in your environment. You can check in and see is that authentic hunger that you're feeding or just um, convenience or boredom or anxious feelings. Wearing cool colors is also really helpful if you tend to just feel heated a lot. Um, and when we're in kapha season, wearing warming colors is really helpful. So finding, you know, you don't have to like get rid of your whole wardrobe, but noticing like if you're going to be outside during a cool cloudy day, you might wear some warm colors to help keep you warm. And if you are, especially if you're vata or kapha predominant, and then if you are in more of a warm environment, wearing cooling colors can really be helpful for you. So that's more like blues, greens, purples, things like that. And warming colors are reds, oranges, yellows. Um, I mentioned air conditioning earlier, and I want to just encourage you to be wary of air conditioning because it really like messes with your body's awareness of the season. And we are so connected with nature, even if it's like not something you're conscious about. So air conditioning can really lead you to believe that you're moving from, you know, kapha spring to winter or from pitta summer to winter. And so if you air, use air conditioning, I really want to encourage you to keep it at the like uh, temperature that is enough of a reprieve from the outside temperature, but not so cold that you need to put on other clothing or that it feels like a shock when you walk outside. Okay, so you might, instead of like turning it down to like 68 or 65 or something, which is more of like an autumn or spring temperature, think about like, could you have it at 75 or 78 or something in your house? And then it's like, 
you know, maybe 10 degrees warmer outside, that can be really, really helpful. Um, yeah, I'll talk about melon in just a moment, Karen. Great question. So, um, air conditioning is just something I really want you to be aware of. And it can also really compromise your immune system to be moving back and forth in and out of air conditioning. And you'll notice this if you go into stores that are really cold, you'll often find yourself sneezing, either going into them or coming out. And your body's just like, what's going on? I'm trying to figure out like what season am I in? So really trying to help your body understand the season as much as possible is really helpful. And then keeping in mind that regardless of if you are you know experiencing vada season or kapha season right now or like what point of the day that travel which is something that a lot of us do coming out I mean especially if we have kids right like our kids are be done with school at the end of this week and then we start traveling and we're you know busy doing things and so travel really elevates vata and so there's that drying quality um, and so really, you know, thinking about keeping rhythms as much as possible with meal timing and sleep and all of this. Another thing that can be helpful is oiling the body. So Abhyanga and depending on your constitution and, um, so springtime is more wet and a lot of us find that we don't need to use as much oil on our bodies during that time of year. Some of us do, especially for Nevada stage of life. Um, and dry brushing is something that can be used instead of or in addition to Abhyanga. So self-massage is really powerful in terms of like keeping the body healthy, the lymph moving, and, and helping us feel grounded. When we move into more warmth, you might notice that you want less or more oil. Again, it's like, you know, up, up to you. Yeah, what what works for you. Okay, and then we have, um, one second, I need to plug in my computer. Um, then we have some food guidelines. So in general, during the the seasons we have three tastes that we want to focus on and three tastes that we want to have less of as we're pacifying the dosha that's predominant in that season so in kapha season we um the the taste that we want to focus on generally and especially if you have more kapha in your constitution is bitter pungent and astringent so bitter we know astringent is drying. So things like leafy greens, Swiss chard especially has that little chalky feeling on your teeth. You can feel that. Um, and pungent is spicy. Okay. So those are things that we want to focus on in our, um, in our food. And what we want to minimize is sweet, sour, and salty during kapha season. Those are all augmenting tissue building tastes. We still need some because we need to keep our bodies you know supported but we're going to have less of them when we come into pitta season we're going to focus more on a balance and the tastes we want to prioritize are sweet bitter and astringent and i want to really say loud and clear sweet is not sugar okay sweet taste comes from fruit and from root vegetables and some root vegetables are in the summertime like beets and carrots right and then we get other root vegetables in the autumn with things like sweet potatoes and rutabagas and parsnips and things like that those are all sweet too so grains are also sweet dairy is sweet and so adding some sweetness or a little more in as we have these amazing fresh fruits and vegetables available will have more of that sweet, but then also still having bitter and astringent. But we want to not have so much pungent because that's so heat building and we don't need as much heat. So we're, we're shifting and this shift isn't so drastic as some of the other seasonal shifts because two of those tastes from kapha season, the bitter and astringent are continuing into pitta season. We want to continue bitter and astringent. So eat your leafy greens, yeah? And even wild greens, things like dandelion, um, purslane, chickweed, like those are so great for 
for pitta season as well. Um, we want to um, notice what our digestive fire can handle in terms of raw foods, but pitta season is generally the season where we can eat raw foods if we have healthy agni, healthy digestive fire. So if you're more vata predominant, you may decide not to do that. I have done years where I don't eat any raw in the summertime. I still have everything cooked. As my digestive fire has built, I've been able to have more raw. If you have really strong digestive fire, probably your pitta predominant, and you can handle more raw foods. So this is the season of salads and slaws and things like that. If you notice that you eat them and you feel cold or you get gassy and bloated, then notice that's not your good choice for you right now and it's better to eat more warming foods um, or at least cooked, cooked foods. We wanna eat cold things away from other foods too. And this is true all the time, but summer, this shift especially from kapha season into pitta season, when it's like, oh, it's a warm out and then we're like, ooh, like an iced tea sounds good or some iced in my lemonade or even ice cream right and so thinking about having those things away from other foods okay so that might be something that you have in the middle of the afternoon on a really hot day when you don't have much of an appetite because it's so hot out you might have something that that is cold but don't ask your body to digest other things Right? So if you're having something cold, it's like dampening your digestive fire, and then you're not gonna be able to digest and assimilate and benefit from anything else that's in your belly. So if you're having ice cream, have it separate from other food. If you're having ice lemonade, have it separate from other food. So that might be in the middle of the day, okay? We do wanna eat certain foods away from other foods. So melon is a food that we don't wanna combine with any other food. And Karen asked, is eating melon in the middle of the three to four hour digestion window okay since this fruit type di digests so fast? And I would say yes. Melon is an exception to the no snacking rule. It can also be a really great, um, earlier later dinner if it's really hot out you could eat like a whole cantaloupe or a whole honeydew and that's your your supper your dinner so that can be kind of fun in the in the summer um and not what we generally expect about what that last meal of the day looks like in our culture but it's something that you can you can see like does this feel good to you melons are cooling so melon is basically sugar and water and it digests really fast and so we really want to keep melon away from other foods because if it's digested with other foods it ends up fermenting in your gut and creating ama or undigested food stuff in toxins in your gut so we really want to eat melon away from other foods and it can be an exception because it does digest very quickly and then finally we want to avoid things that are heating as we've just hopefully shed the heat that we've kind of built up or the insulation that we've built up over the winter that we're not bringing in lots and lots of heating things so you know, things that create heat in the body are hot foods. So, you know, really spicy things. We wanna minimize those as we're coming into pitta season. And then other things like red meat and um, nightshades. So those are your peppers, tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplant. Those can also be very heating. So, you know, minimize them. If you really like them, don't be having lots and lots and lots and lots of them. And you'll notice if you have too much, your body will tell you, you might break out in a rash or get acne or, you know, have really loose stool or something. There's too much heat there. And then we also want to really reduce or minimize or avoid caffeine and alcohol. And this can be a challenging one in the summer because it's like party time, right? Um, and especially the alcohol piece. So, you know, make it an every once in a while thing if that's important to you. But you also might run an experiment and see if you 
go without those things, both of which are super heating, how you feel. And especially if you are dealing with hot flashes, you'll notice that you're more sensitive to heating things during this transition and into pitta season. So keeping it balanced, keeping it cool, not poking the dragon, right? <laughs> We're gonna keep things very cool and calm. So I hope these guidelines really help you think about navigating this shift from kapha season to pitta season and how you might dance a little bit with this each day when it's cool and cloudy out or wet, you know, have a little more warmth, do a little more invigorating exercise. And then when it's warm out, have more cooling things and then um, see if you can have some fun. <laughs> okay. So let me know if you have any questions. I really appreciate you all learning here and being here and please share these with other people. They're available either on Facebook or YouTube so we can help everybody be healthier and happier in the world. All right. Take care, everyone. Mwah. Be well.